Hey everybody, it's Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado, and today I have the 2023 Kia Sportage uh, in steel gray with black interior, and this guy is the LX model. It is Kia Sportage month here in my channel because honestly, that's the most cars that we have gotten this month uh, that are not pre-sold. We've just gotten a lot of them and they're all Kia Sportages. So I have done the plug-in hybrid, I've done the SX Prestige, I want to say I have an X-Pro on there, and then today we have the entry-level VLX. If you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to get to that thousand subscribers. I am inching my way there. I think I'm at like I need 150 to go, give or take. Uh, but again, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Uh, it definitely helps me create more content in the future. So right away, let's just start with something different. Let's go right to the tires. So you have 17-inch alloy wheels right there nice bold style i really do like even how on the base model here you have these really cool um wheels um they, they are very striking for being a base model which is really really cool coming along to the front you have your daytime running lights in kia's boomerang uh design here on the sportages they're big they're bright um very very distinctive and they are very easy to see on the road you have your tiger nose grille coming here across the front and then you have kia's script badging dead center there on the hood which is always nice to see big fan of the script badging down below you can kind of just see the profile there and coming up along the side again this is the steel gray all-wheel drive on the mirror caps, you do not have, I'm going to say what you do not have on some of the other models. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll know that on higher trim levels, you have the turn signal light there on the, on the mirror caps. These ones you do not. Coming along the body line here. Get out of my own shadow. Push and pop gas cap, which is always really cool. So if the car is unlocked, you just press it and she pops right open. If it is locked, this guy will not open. So push and pop gas cap. Coming along the back, you again have Kia signature badging right there dead center. You have your backup light again at the top of dead center. And let's see what we got underneath there. You do have a windshield wiper, which a lot of people um, love because the cars without windshield wipers underneath the fin uh, people tend to always ask where's the windshield wiper why doesn't it have a windshield wiper do I really need a windshield wiper you have Kia's 4x badging there on the bottom right uh, on the LX model and then you have this kind of uh, hard black plastic here along the back Kind of the back diffuser so again this is a base model so you do have your backup camera right there kind of sticking out in its normal spot but if you go right down here press and lift you have your manual lift gate right there big 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 backspace so same backspace in the higher trim levels um, nothing you're not losing anything there but you can definitely see how much cargo room is back here child anchor locks on all three seats along the back so if you have little ones you can definitely uh, have them back here safe and secure with the child anchor locks you have your 12 volt charger right there along with the trunk light or the well, i guess i call it a trunk light you have your paddle shifters here so your paddle flaps so these little paddles will drop these seats near flat which is kind of cool gives you a lot more cargo space and then you have your seat belt clips right there as you can see that one is not attached and then this guy here just kind of give you a little panoramic view there of the inside cabin cloth headliner okay let's close it up just kind of use your center of gravity and a little bit of muscle and that guy goes right down, which is kind of cool. Once it kind of hits that center of gravity, then the door just kind of falls, which is really nice. Um, you don't have to be 
She-Hulk to uh, close that cabin, that uh, back cabin door. Okay, let's take a look at the back seat. So I did put this guy down with the paddle shifters. I'm just gonna gently tap that back up. Gonna hop in. You do have um, a nice recline in the back. So you can recline. There is a shot of the inside cabin. Let's talk leg room. So leg room, got plenty of leg room here. I'm 5'9", 5'10", and this seat, uh, this driver's seat is kind of pushed back the way that you would uh, you'd probably drive normally. Um, and so you have plenty of leg room there. You have your mat pocket back here. You have your air back here for your back passengers. And then you have your little cubby space down there. If you watch my other videos on the higher trim levels, you can definitely see the difference in the interior. This is premium cloth, um, not the leather. And uh, you know, it's something that is durable, easy to keep clean, uh, but it is cloth. You have your dome light up there, super easy. Kind of self-explanatory on that. Back here you have your little hooks to hold on to, and then you have your garment hook. Really comfortable. Um, I've actually been in the back seat of one of these things uh, on a little bit of a trip, and I, I really don't have any complaints, so I don't think your passengers would have any complaints either. You have your center armrest here that does come down. And you have cup holders. Pretty nifty. You got a nice comfortable armrest there. And then it just kind of goes up with just a little bit of force. So you can adjust these front seats with that little button right there on the right hand side. And then these uh, seat um, headrests they also push forward as well. So you can adjust uh, three levels uh, of pu pushing them forward and back. Sometimes it takes a little bit of force. You have to use both hands, but you can push them forward and back three levels, which is really interesting. Not a lot of people know that. They think they don't move, but they really do. You just have to do them a certain way. Just wanna show you that recline one more time because I was kind of sitting down when I was showing it. But when you use this lever right here on the side, you can adjust that back and then you can go into what I call a slight recline. You know, if you're taller, if you're going on road trips, you know, it's actually a lot more comfortable instead of sitting straight up. So these back seats do adjust. Child anchor locks down here. You can see the little white, the little white pegs. And then down here, you, you can actually feel the, uh, the, the steel hooks, which are really cool. You actually have a little hook to keep your seat belts in, which is really nice. I noticed that on my Kia personally, and then it's nice to see they continue that with the Sportage. All right, so let's go take a look at where you'll probably be spending the most of your time in the driver's side. So up here in the driver's side, you do have starting from left to right window locks, the one touch uh, roll up and down windows, door locks, and then your mirror adjustments. This guy is a base model, like I said, so you do have just kind of your standard manual adjusting seats. Uh, this guy, you can pump yourself up and down to move, you know, so you can get height. And then you have your, um, you know, recline right there with that lever there. You have a bar underneath in order to move you forward and backwards, so pretty easy. You can adjust the steering wheel. It's fully telescopic with that lever right there. And that steering wheel can go in and out and up and down all that good stuff coming on to the inside of the cabin here uh super quiet very very comfortable i have the air conditioning on low um but very very comfortable um super super comfortable actually just kind of coming over here left to right you have get my head out of the way you have your illumination button there with uh, the plus and the minuses right there you have your traction control and your electric parking brake. Now you do have this kind of curved screen effect even on the LX base model, um, but you can tell kind of right here where it's, you know, very plasticky, um, not horrible, definitely not horrible, not knocking it at all. But if you take a look at my videos on the higher trim levels, you can see how this is 
looks like one pane of glass. In reality, it's not, but it definitely has that illusion of one pane of glass. And you can definitely see the two different eight inch screens in here. So kind of just coming to the front here, um, this button here is your two pages button, which controls this screen in front of you. So you can press that button and you can go left to right through your settings, your uh, tire pressure gauge there, um, lane keep assist, and then this toggle switch right here can move you up and down. So, you know, every, every option that you go left to right on, you can go up and down. And so let's say we just click in convenience, you can do auto rear wiper, which that should be on anyway. Um, you can spend an hour in this car playing around with the settings exactly how you want. I always like to turn the welcome sound on even though most people turn it off. It's always nice when you buy a new car that you kind of have that set up the way, you know, the way that it could be. So see your fuel gauge there on the left and your temperature gauge, you know, right over here on the right. And this car has 320 miles till empty. Now, if I were to be myself, I would probably drive with this, oops, not that screen. Probably this screen here. Um, since refueling, it tells you your average miles per gallon. Um, this car is fresh off the truck, so I mean, it hasn't been driven at all, just from the front of the lot to here. Um, 15 miles on it, 62 degrees outside. And then you have your kind of your average miles per gallon gauge that'll be right there once you're driving it. Love the fact that these cars have auto lights, so I do turn the lights on to auto. That way you never have to turn your lights on or off. You have your windshield wiper stick right over there on the right hand side. And then over here you have your digital assistant, your voice control. You have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in this car and Bluetooth. And so you would be able to, to control it with that. You have your different audio modes here. So you can scroll through AM, FM, if it's available, Sirius XM, that kind of thing accept a call and then the star button if we i'm going to click that star button and over here you're going to get a notice saying that this is a customizable button so you can make it be you know any of these options you know reject a call end a call privacy mode quiet mode all that most people are pretty used to reject a call for that button so that's what i'm going to make it little house takes you home so that'll just take you back here uh, right hand side you have your cruise control and then your forward lane assist so that'll help you stay in the lanes if you're like on a two lane highway it'll also move you back gently into the lanes if you're veering out of it so that's your forward lane assist button right here uh, you do have to turn it on every time you uh, get into the car all right so your infotainment system so your infotainment system here uh looks pretty standard from the last couple of years of kia um as you can tell there's not much here but you do click into all menus it'll take you into some options like quiet mode which is really cool so when quiet mode is selected all media is played only in the front speakers and volume levels above 25 will decrease to 25 automatically now one thing that people sometimes say is hey my i have the volume all the way up and it won't it won't be any louder what's the deal with that more than likely it is your phone it's it's the volume of the car if you're playing music from your phone is dependent upon your phone's volume so if your phone's all the way down turn your phone up and then the volume will adjust um, appropriately a little arrow takes you back so it'll take you back a screen a little house takes you home which takes you to the main screen uh, but let's just go back into all menus there for a second you do have uh, you know phone you can hook this guy up with Bluetooth uh, media which is the music on your phone phone projection which is please connect the phone that supports Android Auto using an approved USB ca USB cable or a wireless connection or a phone that supports Apple CarPlay using a wireless connection so fun fact weird fact I don't know why it is that way but wireless Apple CarPlay on the base model you do not have wireless Apple CarPlay on your top-of-the-line models but if you are into the wireless Apple CarPlay, the base model might be a way to go for you if that is a deal breaker. Uh, setup, so again, you can play with the climate, you can play with the sound, you go up here into general, um, and you can play around with like language and keyboard, all that kind of stuff. Um, not as many options as you would get in the higher trim level, but again, it's a base model. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, uh, 
it's just less to fiddle with if you ask me and it's probably what about 10 grand less than the top top of the line one thing over here is that you will see this climate cluster right through here you do not have dual climate control it is single climate control so you have your temperature right over here or, i'm sorry your blower speed right over here and then you have your temperature right over here you know you have your directionals where you want the air to blow you know your defrosters ac should be on well, we've got to turn it on for AC to be on, but AC should be on. And then you have your recirculated air indicator. If it is amber in color, um, that means it's on. So when it's not amber, it is off. Down here, you have your 12 volt USB port and USB-C charging port. And then you have your heated seats. Even in this LX base model, you do have heated seats, which is pretty cool. You have your downward hill brake assist, your auto hold, auto off, camera, and then forward parking sensors. Camera is just going to switch you into your back camera mode without throwing yourself into reverse. And then you can even adjust this little guy and change your different camera views if you need that. You also have camera settings right here too, um, which you can play around with if you need to little house again takes you home not too shabby uh, auto hold auto hold is quietly my favorite feature i use it actually every single day uh, when i throw myself into drive which i am now in and let's just roll forward a little bit i'm going to put my foot down on the brake and then i'm going to press auto hold right there you will see the little green auto hold indicator right there and now I could take my feet off the gas. So now I'm basically parked. Um, let's say I'm at a drive through I'm picking up my kid from practice, that kind of thing. I am now parked and I can just go at any time. So very useful in drive throughs So now to go or a red light, I just put my foot on the gas and away I go. So auto hold again, quietly my favorite feature. I use it every day. That's, that's why it's my favorite. I'm just gonna actually throw myself back into auto hold, which what I just did turned off auto hold because I was already in auto hold to begin with. So if you are already in the auto hold cycle, all you have to do is put your foot down back on the brake and then it'll re-engage you back into auto hold in one engine revolution. So you know one, one kind of cycle from when the engine was on. Kind of have your cup holders here in this big cubby space uh, to activate them. You just press these little buttons here and then they appear. And then you have your big central cubby. You also have a nice little cubby right here, uh, your glove box, uh, pretty, you know, pretty decent size, um, pretty standard size. Can't complain about that. One thing this car does not have, and I don't know why, what key is reasoning is, because it's still right here, is the sunglass holder. There are no sunglass holders in these cars anymore. Um, not just this car. I mean, other Kia models just do not have sunglass holders. Look, here's a piece of plastic. You could find plastic on your cars all the time. I think it's impossible to get every single piece of plastic off, no matter how much time our detailer can spend on this car when they deliver it, you'll always find a piece of plastic. Like, it's insane. It's, I don't, I, <laughs> I, have the, I, I think I have the, one of the best detailers out there that I've ever worked with, and he still can miss that. All right, so I just put my foot on the gas and we are gonna creep back up here. I'm gonna put this guy back on the lot. Right now I only have two new cars uh, on the lot. This LX Sportage and that white SX, I'm sorry, that white, um, I think it's an X-Line, that white X-Line Sorrento right there. And it's not even available, it is sold. But that's it, car shortage. I mean, we sell them as quickly as we get them, um, and we're getting three trucks a month. So we're getting, you know, a, a lot of cars. And in October, we're gonna get a boatload of cars, like a lot of cars, actually. I mean, October is when the inventory looks like it's gonna catch up almost back to normal levels for at least my dealership um, for pretty much everything, uh, including 23 Tellurides. I should have a video on that, hopefully at the end of the month, because I already have two 23 Tellurides coming in. Um, but yeah, all of that is used cars out there. See if I can make that just a little bit more in focus. Use cars, use cars, use cars. Plenty of Tellurides. People are trading in their Tellurides for other ones, but that's a whole different video. Um, all right, guys, if you made this far, thanks for watching. Um, get my hand out of the way of the camera. 
thanks for watching and I will see you guys down at the dealership. And don't forget, if you made it this far, you probably like it. So like and subscribe.